today we will continue from the previous class on different paradigms of resource management. So, if you recall the previous uh, class, we discussed about the different, you know, paradigms, four or five paradigms on resource management. Today we will look at the management issues that are associated with the key natural resources. If you look at that a sustainable resource management or utilization of natural resources in a sustainable manner is actually very, very important for social and human welfare. And their management must be in such a way that we can utilize it to the maximum, but at the same time with minimum depletion of those resources. And naturally that would be a challenge in utilizing in one side and at the same time managing it in appropriate manner so that we don't completely finish it from the ecosystem. To address this challenge, sustainable resources management and conservation practices are being followed. And it is also very, very pertinent to analyze and incorporate different factors into the design of natural resource management in a very comprehensive manner. So, the major factors or issues associated with natural resource management are individual factors, socio-economic factors, political and economic factors and institution factors. Each one of these factors are critically important in devising the natural resource management strategy. Now, we will look at all these factors individually. First, individual factors. It includes the personal, perceptional and attitudinal factors. People or human attitude is very important for the appropriate utilization of resources. We discussed in the previous classes also that how much of amount of resources that one requires, it depends on that individual attitude also. Heterogeneous individual characteristics in terms of age, gender, education, income, means financial status, are likely to affect their attitudes towards the perception as well as the management of natural resources. A formal education policy or education system, it normally confronts people with the various consequences of misuse, misutilizations, you know, management of different resources like land, water. But here, the utilization of resources by people in some cases could be a very sustainable and it is inherently into their behavior. It may sound little contradictory to you. Let me explain it. Say the example of traditional cultivation system like shifting cultivation. There are, uh, I mean, people argue that shifting cultivation is not good from the point of, you know, natural resource management. But if you look at the history and the philosophy of shifting cultivation, you will find that that is not only one traditional ecological knowledge, it also based on a very tested field experience. So, if the shiptic cultivation is done in the appropriate manner, a sense of sustainability is already there. So, that is why when we say that continuous utilization of resources may be termed as mismanagement, but this may not be true in some cases where the resources are used through some traditional practices which inherently are sustainable in nature. Attitudes towards the conservation and management of resources are built upon perception of resource depletion of risk associated with the adoption of different conservation practices. If no visible threat is seen, people always tend to follow out of sight, out of mind principle. If they see that there is no immediate threat is there, so definitely they become little bit casual. So, people try to, you know, just follow that principle out of sight, out of mind. Now, their attitude, individual attitude could be either positive or negative or a blend of both and this would invariably affect the 
conservation practices because they determine the degree of participation of an individual in the conservation programs and also in the adaptation of various conservation technology. Next is the socio-economic factors. Now, if you look at modern medical facilities which actually has led to a considerable decrease in mortality rates because of good medicines, good medical cares, hospital. So, all those things has somehow brought down the death rate. So, when death rate goes down, then if you recall that concept of carrying capacity J curve, S curve. So, when death rate goes down, so definitely even if the birth rate goes at the same pace, you are bound to have a larger population. So, larger utilization of natural resources. Here, I am not being judgmental. I am just sharing with you the fact of advancement of science and technology, how actually it could affect. Given the availability of natural resources in an area or in a country, and suppose they are open to all and they are meeting the demands for various purposes for our individual or community aspiration and that leads to some exorbitant uses of different resources like forest, pasture, etc. And these you know raise to interpersonal, interclass, intercommunity and interinstitutional conflict because when the resources are in limited amount and you have different kind of aspiration or expectation at the individual level, at the class level, community level, institutional level. So, there will be a kind of conflict and this kind of conflict at times could raise some kind of problem in the resource management. And in certain cases, it could even lead to kind of a interstate or inter-district or inter-country conflict even. So, the failure of planners or policy makers in identifying the requirements of the public concerns. What is the public requirement? In appropriate manner, instead of they give at times more you know importance to some of their vested interest for various subgroups, unequal access to resources on the basis of various categories, skewed distribution of land resources, inadequate farm labor supply, the absence of popular leadership, then mechanisms of political culture. So, these all actually also work as an ingredient of a potential conflict with regard to natural resources, availability and utilization. Whatever may be the cause, any this kind of conflict could be very, very detrimental to resource conservation and management because this ultimately leads to poor participation of people in the management planning and programs and to illegal uses or over uses of common property like water, river water, forest, pasture. So, this particular issue can lead to a situation where at times people call it tragedy of commons. We will also touch upon this tragedy of commons in future class. Next is politico-economic factors. One of the most important factors for you know efficient and sustainable natural resource management. If the political environment is not conducive or helpful, even if the natural resource management system has been designed, it may not work because you need a conducive political environment, a supporting financial tools should be there. So, natural resources are by no means recently is institutionalized and they are thought to have originated with the inception of communal hunting and gathering activities. But those days are gone. Now, natural resource management has come a long way and this demands a scientific and technical approach to manage 
natural resources. So, with the inception of industrialization, urbanization and also the development of intensive agriculture, there are a lot of destruction of natural resources like forest, pastures has taken place because there was a demand for food crops like cereals, raw materials like cotton. So, on the basis of the demand of people or population, there was a change during the industrialization time or intensive agriculture, the land use also got modified. Now, if you look at the declaration of all public resources as you know kind of a crown lands or government lands, then what happened is that only few privileged people will be allowed to utilize those resources which are coming under the crown lands or so called government lands. So, that could also generate certain amount of you know differences and conflict in the society. However, a small but powerful group of people like politicians, some leaders, administrators, they will actually arrange themselves to retain the access to such land. Now, these are happening. I mean, all of us, we are aware of the fact, but the challenge is how to address these issues so that the resources which are available in a particular geographical area are accessible to the maximum number of people. So, that is why political and economical environment is very, very important whether the natural resource management will be efficient for a particular you know area. Next, let us go to institutional factors. Now, common ownership as a single most important cause for depletion of natural resources because anything, any resources which are designated as common, definitely it will be exploited to the maximum and no care would be taken because that does not belong to anyone. So, nobody wants to take care of that resources and this often leads to mismanagement rather than you know common use. Each user is only concerned about their interest, their utilization, their benefit and most of the time they ignore the user of extracting a unit today. The cost of extracting a unit today has to be considered and one should even if the resources is common for all, it should be utilized in such a way that the future generation also can get the benefit of that particular resource. But that does not happen in most of the cases and that is why we need an efficient management system for natural resources. The management of these resources for sustainable production is an institutional challenge and it requires adequate investment in production and management, systematic and scientific extraction from the available stock in any particular area and finally, efficient utilization of those resources. Now, institutional decisions or steps like social forestry projects, marketing facilities, market center, extension services, irrigation facilities. So, these are all actually are normally being implemented to encourage or to boost the judicious use of natural resources. However, in many cases, you will see that these projects fail to attain their goal because of various reasons. One is that very poor participation by the community. The reason could be that they are not aware of the you know initiative, proper extension work has not been might have carried out, lack of understanding on the importance of an individual resource, political pressure, social unrest. There could be various reasons for what actually the community participation actually is not that much as it should be. Thus, there is a need for provision of adequate and efficient extension service, which must look for natural resource management, awareness, people participation, because without the community participation, 
natural resource management cannot be a successful exercise. Thank you.